This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Thank you, first of all, everybody for being here. And uh, it's really an enormous pleasure uh, to welcome uh, among us uh, Professor Mariangela Puglisi, who is, uh, among other things, a great friend of the ANS. She's also, and she's been our visiting scholar, the visiting scholar of the Eric P. Newman Summer Seminar, Graduate Summer Seminar uh, back in 2018. So thank you also for that. So I'll just, uh, so my, uh, Professor Puglisi is an Associate Professor of Numismatics at the University of uh, Messina. Um, her research interests range from iconography to coin circulation, particularly concerning Sicily, ancient Lucania, Thessaly, and digital numismatics. Uh, for her scientific, her scientific research, has been awarded several international and national awards. She's a member, of course, uh, of the American Numismatic Society, Royal Numismatic Society, Societe Royale de Numismatique de Belgique and several other numismatic institutions all around the world. And she's on the scientific and editorial board of several scientific journals. She's the author of numerous scientific articles and of two monographs respectively published in 2009 and 2012. The first on monetary circulation in Sicily, in the Greek and Roman Republican age, and one on the iconography of seats on uh, Roman coinage. Her third mo uh, monograph, uh, which is a corpus on the coinage of the, of the mint of Scutus and Thessaly, is in preparation. But she's also, on top of all of this, uh, she's also uh, part of the member of the steering committee of the follow of the digi of the following digital databases projects. Sorry, the Lexicon Iconographicum Numismatiche. Uh, and the Diana, which is a project for digital iconography, iconographic atlas of numismatic on antiquity. I can go on, but of course, I think everybody prefers to listen to Mariangela rather than to me talking about, about her. So thank you very much, Mariangela, again, for being with us. Uh, and uh, I'll let you leave you the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Um, first of all, let me thank uh, uh, all the colleagues uh, and friends uh, of uh, the American Numismatic Society, an institution where I uh, have spent a lot of time, uh, always uh, fruitful and enjoyable <laughs> um, for my research, of course. Um, so, uh, <laughs> If you agree, I share the screen to begin. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, so uh, what I intend to do today uh, is to analyze the topic of war on Sicilian uh, ancient coins, a theme that uh, is generally very frequent in, in ancient coinages. Um, I will also investigate uh, the possible links between the choices uh, of uh, specific uh, coin types. Uh, uh, sorry, hmm. um, um, related to war and the purposes of issuing coins uh, by Sicilian means in the Greek period. Purposes that were mostly military due to the frequent conflicts uh, from archaic to the Republican age, especially between the Siciliots and the Carthaginians and later against the Romans. Sicily can represent an ideal case study to identify possible references uh, of these iconographies uh, over time. 
in Sicily indeed, um, new types were often experimented uh, due to its um, position among various cultures, uh, Greek, Punic, indigenous and uh, Italic mercenaries and Rome uh, as well. Uh, here, uh, the binomial work coinage seems to have been a constant, thanks mainly to the presence of several armies composed largely of mercenary troops as early as the dawn of the 5th century BC. And thanks to the war policies of Sicilian tyrants, such as Hippocrates of uh, Gela, the Dinomanids, both in Gela and Syracuse, the Manids uh, in Acragas, Anaxilas and then his successors in Messana, and so on. Uh, facing the professional Carthaginians, Carthaginian armies, they had employed increasingly large number of military contingents of Xenoi Mistoforoi, and this uh, use continued until the arrival of, uh, of the Romans. While Herodotus' account um, about the origins of coinage points to the commercial sphere, the reality of the facts over time has shown that in the ancient world, the impulse to mint coins was linked to, to the payment and maintenance of regular and mercenary arms, although the phenomenon of coin circulation was then triggered in commercial transaction of all kinds. Troops and uh, especially mercenaries required adequate payments. In addition to initial engagement, a large mistos in precious metal and the, uh, at the end of their service, and possibly the citaresion for daily expenses during military campaigns. The latter usually uh, from the second half of the fifth century in Sicily uh, in bronze. Numerous studies on Roman wars show that state expenditure for military expenses during the Roman Empire exceeded 70%. Um, the close link between war and coinage can be summarized by the word soldier, similarly descending in several modern languages uh, regarding its uh, etymology, as we all know, from the word solidus, referring to the Constantinian solidus aureus. Um, uh, it is not uh, um, unlikely, uh, therefore, that the issuing authorities also, also took uh, into account when choosing coin iconographies, the definition of their um, issues, uh, the recipients uh, uh, of them, um, or better, the first intended beneficiaries for a specific uh, issue struck to respond to the contingent needs for a particular payment, um, investing in the military field uh, and all revolving it ar around it. As far as the, uh, the iconography of points is concerned, the importance of the choice of coin types in relationship to, to the destination of each particular uh, issue cannot be completely, completely ruled out or considered marginal, although it should not be overestimated. Coins, in fact, uh, because of their function, regardless uh, of the subjects uh, depicted on them, were in many cases acceptable within the community that had produced them, uh, as they were legal tender independently from the subjects de depicted on them. Needless to say, pecunia non olet. Um, this is no. Um, this is in no way in contradiction with the more distinctly religious types. Sorry, <clears throat> uh, which in antiquity were linked to the to state authority, especially in the field of coinage, where at the iconographic level the two semantic domains, religious and military, overlap. Uh, so, as we just said, uh, in ancient Sicilian coinages from the 5th to the 2nd century BC, coin types linked to war are quite common. In this talk, we will analyze some of these typologies and their possible meaning, especially images depicting weapons, heroes, or generic uh, warriors. Um, uh, the... Um, 
the topic, uh, the first step, um, the first step was to classify uh, the the images um, perceived as connected with war and uh, the military field uh, into iconographic categories. Among the objects, uh, we find a certain number of weapons, part of the soldier's uh, equipment. Among personages, we find the uh, human warriors uh, dressed as soldiers, sometimes also with signs uh, of commons um, uh, as military chiefs, or presented as horsemen holding at least a weapon. Um, then heroes, uh, mythological characters, uh, actually founder heroes or oikistes, who can coincide with strategoi heroes for the distinct sign of common they bear. Uh, deities, of course, clearly belonging to war imagery, um, that is uh, Athena and Ares, uh, um, warriors uh, par excellence, um, and uh, some, uh, some others like Dioscuroi or uh, the um, Nikai. Um, excluding deities uh, quite widespread in Sicilian means, as we can see from uh, the distribution maps, uh, we will observe the diatopic distribution of warriors, among which we find also the armed heroes, and then their diachronical appearance as coin types in Sicily. Um, if the weapons depicted on Sicilian coins are various, uh, as we, we can see from this map, uh, helmets, uh, cuirasses, uh, shields, greaves, um, here represented uh, uh, just as main types, um, they usually appear as attributes, uh, so as secondary elements, uh, uh, as for example other, other weapons, as uh, swords and spears, for example, uh, denoting uh, different personages, uh, generic warriors and heroes. Um, uh, among these weapons, uh, the helmet is by far the most represented, not only as an attribute, uh, but also as a, a main type. Beside the example of the first half of the 5th century, the Camarinian and the Chimerian ones, we find them as main types later in the city of Entella, occupied by the Campanian mercenaries since the end of the, the fifth century, and later in a single issue uh, of Tauromenion um, of the, the Tainolentian age, uh, the latter significantly mer mercenary centers. Uh, in, in the polis uh, of Imera, um, as a main type or as a denotative attribute of heads, the helmet appears insistently in various forms. Attic with loafers and neck guard, Corinthian, Calchidian, often with floral decoration. The interesting variety of the same concept of the helmet underlines the idea of a well-equipped um, army of a strong police where the military roles are distinguished and well organized. The particular attention to the depiction of the different elements could point to a specific target to members of the army, well used to all the military signs. It seems to point to a police that celebrates this way its military power, representing itself as a military stronghold of the Greeks of Sicily. In particular, we can hypothesize that the components of the army uh, um, are portrayed. Uh, its supreme commander, birded with the uh, Attic uh, helmet, his subordinate chiefs, uh, simpler decorated uh, helmets, the army, empty Corinthian helmet, and also the governor, represented with a bare head with a diadema uh, of the sovereign, along with the empty helmet representing the whole corpus of fighters. Um, the, the power couple appears also on, on other media, painted pottery, for example, uh, with this uh, analogous kind of hierarchy. 
Um, beside Himera, the coinage uh, that exploited more this uh, uh, most this typology is uh, the one produced uh, at Entella by the Campanoi, uh, the companion uh, mercenaries after various movements on Sicilian territory, both on the side of the Siciliotan and on the side of the Carthaginians, at the end of the 5th century returned to the Carthaginians. Carthaginian eparchy, settling at Entella where they began to mint their own coinage, choosing to inscribe their name alone or along with the name of the center they occupied, Entella in genitive form. Also the iconography chosen reflect in their equipment and their ethnos, um, the bearing um, the um, Calcidian helmet uh, as a main type, as we already observed. Um, and uh, also Pegasus and the horse we see frequently on the rivers uh, of the coins, um, sometimes accompanied by a little helmet as a symbol, can be an, an allusion to their role of equites for which they were well known in the Greek world. Uh, once independent uh, from the Carthaginians, uh, they needed a, 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 a autonomous coinage, probably auto-financed uh, by booties and by the finances of the city of Entella, already inhabited by indigenous. Uh, this main type um, became uh, a helmeted head uh, at the end of the century. Someone has interpreted it as mammoths, also in the case of a birdless head. Um, and uh, looking at, um, at the whole um, um, articulation of uh, uh, this series, it seems instead that we can recognize also, also here a, a hierarchy in the characters depicted. Uh, the military chief or, or the god, if, uh, if uh, it is the hot, or the Oscan deity Mars uh, assimilated uh, to Mars, um, uh, uh, and the army represented by the young head accompanied uh, with the uh, horse, uh, while the legend with the toponym prevails on the ethnic, expressed only by the initial uh, Achaic. Uh, the Nymphentella associated with Pegasus for the large denomination, and the military authority, maybe also the political one, uh, as the rest on the helmet could suggest, with the horse indicating the ethnic of the mercenary. Uh, the companion mercenaries minted coins in another Sicilian center they occupied in the Timoliontine age, the Tauromanian, choosing for a single bronze issue, uh, again a helmet, a particular one, um, unique in, in Sicily. Um, uh, typical of southern Italy. Also in this case, they may be wanted to be identified through this symbol of their military power that refers to the lucano Pulian area, where lots of, of these kind of helmets have been found. Um, here we can see all the depictions of warriors, both as heads and the whole figures, standing or advancing and the helmet at the head. The latter, as we said, possibly referred to military chiefs due to some distinctive story what happened. Hmm. Can you see it? Because I can't see anymore. Uh, no, we cannot no? see now. No, we just see uh white screen uh, white screen yeah uh what 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 hmm. uh okay maybe it's okay there we go oh okay um so um okay uh so the um, the latter the helmeted head uh, head as we said, possibly refer to military chiefs due to some uh, distinctive semata well visible on them or a reference to the army in general. 
some of them are instead referring to specific personages as heroes, if not to Ares, Mars, uh, the warrior god. Uh, the helmet is the most distinctive attribute of the category of armed heroes. Very often the weapons uh, uh, as attributes are fundamental to make uh, identifiable the person just depicted on points, especially to draw a distinction among warrior heroes who can be classified in different categories. Uh, mythological heroes in general, as holder of books uh, or protagonists of tales related to the history of the police, who merit of box factions, uh, Achaean and Trojan, um, local heroes, usually heroic founders or heroic uh, oikists, uh, often also eponymous heroes uh, directly connected to the Asian city or distinguished uh, strategoi, uh, heroic as well, uh, endowed with signs of command that uh, differentiate uh, their armor, and in particular their headgear, which points to a leading role in the army. Uh, we are not taking uh, into account heroes who, who are not armed, uh, such as hunters, uh, shepherds, uh, herdsmen, and on the athletes, of course. Uh, the warrior heroes can be represented in various postures. We can we can find them standing in profile or facing or walking or in the promacos position in attack attitude while advancing with weapons in hand and shields embraced, um, or in the act of riding or leading a horse by reins, or only rarely seated uh, or in bed. The cases where the, uh, uh, the identification of a hero is patent, thanks to his name inscribed uh, on the die, are not the most numerous. The observation of the denoting attributes can often give a valuable aid in distinguishing uh, different heroes. But in the remaining cases, um, the personages can only um, be uh, recognizable with a certain degree of likeness, thanks to the whole iconographic context and to the knowledge we have about the mythological legends connected to the issuing city, which can help in interpreting the scenes depicted, recalling myths or literary topoi or events known through historical sources. For this reason, we may infer that the absence of names could be justified in a certain number of cases by the fact that it was obvious for the users of the points to recognize the characters represented because they shared the same imaginary, um, um, imagery with the issuing authority, especially if linked, as presumably, uh, to local traditions. It is above all uh, the case of the eponymous heroes for which the indication of the name as con legend appear redundant in their own uh, foundation. Uh, among the various depiction, uh, depictions of armored figures, presumably of a heroic na nature in Greek coinage, a remarkable part is represented by Homeric he heroes as warriors. In the absence of inscription, the personages are identifiable thanks to the tight link to the issuing centers, being their birthplaces or their reigns or they, uh, their foundations or seats of their cult or for other likely connections. Analyzing the representations of the helmeted figures in Sicilian coinage, we find some generic armored figures and also a few Homeric ones. Um, uh, some of them identifiable uh, due to the inscription that accompanies them um, or due to the common signs that distinguish them as heroes, strategoi, 
or founders, usually characterized by distinctive elements such as the cune, uh, headgear worn uh, under the helmet, uh, typical of uh, the Greek area uh, and um, Magna Graecia, the trilophia of Athenian uh, origin, and the pteroi characteristic of the Italic world. On the coins of the Sicilian mint of Valontion, uh, struck after the Second Punic War, appears, with no other comparisons, the Trojan uh, hero patron, mentioned by Dionysus of Alicarnassus as a companion of Aeneas, recognizable for his Phrygian helmet, chosen by the center, maybe to please the new rulers, the Romans showing a common Trojan uh, origin on on the rivers uh, we see maybe a, a fountain that uh, um, um, human faced uh, pool uh, um, splitting some some water. Um, uh, Achilles uh, is uh, present on a, a well known coin minted in the name of Pyrrhus, probably in Syracuse. But for, for other scholars, uh, it was struck in Locroi Epizephirio in Magna Grecia, uh, in which the young man wears a helmet ornamented with a griffin uh, and a crest. This portrait is accompanied uh, on the rivers by a type that makes the, the explanation of the coin unequivocal, the figure of Thetis, veiled, seated on a seahorse and holding the shield of Achilles with his monogram on it, uh, adorned with a griffin. Uh, this uh, issue represents a way to celebrate Pyrrhus himself through an ancestor of his family and a character to whom he aspires for, for his military value. And here we can see some comparisons um from from Greece uh, other points depicted probably depicting Achilles for the present uh, uh, of his uh, monogram on, on the rivers. As for Odysseus uh, uh, known only from the points of uh, Ithaca, uh, let's show them uh, even uh, lacking uh, the inscription, uh, but as uh, the sole personage plausible there. Um, for a few Sicilian mints, uh, Lipara, Mitistratos, uh, it has been proposed his uh, identification. Uh, due to the presence of the pileus uh, as the headgear, uh, uh, the typical traveling hat. Uh, this element uh, seems to weak anyway. Uh, as uh, it uh, may refer also to Hephaestus, uh, that uh, in, in the case of li li Lipara is more uh, more suitable. The character of Odysseus uh, uh, is uh, known also from uh, uh, Roman uh, uh, depictions uh, um, from coins. But we are not stopping on that. Um, besides uh, besides uh, Homeric heroes, uh, we can find also some local ones, among which only one uh, among the portraits, uh, Adranos, uh, uh, on a Mamertine uh, issue, is presented uh, through uh, the legend. Uh, this reference uh, to the mythological field may have been aimed to inspire a behavior of arete in the local audience, maybe in a sort of identification with the hero uh, as an example to imitate, to be strong and valiant within the civic uh, community. Um, hero appear also as a whole figure, as we can see from uh, the, um, uh, the images, um, equipped like warriors, always helmeted in the Promachus scheme, um, almost all. Uh, all. Um, the choice of a hero means a nobilitation of the origins uh, of a city 
often through the mythical founder. Uh, they are constantly represented as fighting warriors, with few exceptions, um, with the semata of command on their helm, uh, to be recognized as strategoi. All these distinctive elements can be found in Sicily, especially during the Athenian attack against Syracuse, that gave impulse to the issuing authorities to look for local ancestral mythological figures, to take distance from the Greek imagery, and again during the Tumulantian age, celebrating the new foundation of various Siciliotan colleagues. Uh, Syracuse, um, at the time of the Athenian expedition to Sicily, chooses to be represented on the obverse of an issue of drums by the local uh, hero, uh, through the local hero Leucastis. Uh, Promachus with a helmet equipped with pteroi and lophos, uh, typical of the military commanders in the Italic world. Then familiar to the Italic mercenaries operating in Sicily during the Athenian attack to Syracuse. Useful to dis differentiate the Western colonies from the mainland. This choice of recovering an imagery belonging to the seekers of Italic origins uh, through some semata uh, like Locasti's helmet seems an attempt to, to claim their independence also in an ideological and mythical field from Greece. In the second issue, uh, the hero is depicted just after the sacrifice uh, of the foundation. Recalled by the altar and the ram's head on the ground in a clear display of the local roots of the city and of the legitimate possession of the land, but this time um, engraved on the rivers um, of the coin uh, as uh, he, um, he leaves uh, the obverse to a more important character that is Athena the goddess of the enemies, uh, but in frontal position. Uh, so a, a sort of a provocative choice to show that she was on the side of the Sicilians. This character returns again, as we said, in another coinage in the name of the Sileraioi a group of Italic mercenaries settled, settled in northern Sicily in a not known place, uh, recognizable uh, as uh, Leucaspis, uh, not from the name that in fact lacks, uh, but uh, from its, uh, um, his position and from the allusion to the uneven ground that we find also in the Syracusan dies, as we, you can see, I don't know if the mouse can be seen, um, uh, as it probably suited to the, the idea of a new foundation as their city actually was. So this is the Syracusan coin and we can see the ground, the, the uneven ground where the, um, the hero uh, is walking on. Um, the um, presence of the pre-Greek indigenous hero Pheraimon, uh, who was the son of Aeolus, uh, the first king of the Pel uh, Peloris, uh, Capo Pel uh, the, the modern uh, Capo Peloro area in which I am now, uh, near <laughs> the polis of uh, Messana. Um, Mm, uh, at the end of the 5th century BC, uh, not only represents uh, uh, an ideal opposition to hegemonic intentions of Athens towards the West, but uh, its uh, mm, uh, association with the female figure of the nymph Pelorias, uh, uh, the nymph of the territory, 
the goddess of the Cora of, uh, uh, of Peloris, um, can be read in a sort of uh, uh, hierogamy between the territory in, in, identified in the female figure and the army uh, represented by the local hero who conquered the land, Doricitos Cora, uh, through his military arete, uh, typically heroic. Um, this, this hero uh, comes back a century later uh, again to state its function. Uh, he's useful indeed also for the Mamertines, times uh, who borrowed the same model to express their adhesion to the local tradition. And here we can see uh, in um, quite different uh, uh, postures uh, on uh, uh, the Pentonchia of uh, the Manor Times, um, also in fractions. Uh, so uh, always uh, uh, armed with uh, uh, the Corinthian helmet with the Lofus, uh, the Cunet, uh, his shield and uh, a spear. Um, as a reference to the founder Oikis uh, Archias, uh, or um, uh, an unprecedented celebration of the new founder of the polis Timoleon, maybe, uh, an historical personage, uh, although uh, is a hero, is, uh, is detectable on the Syracusan bronze denomination with the head of a commander, as well um, as the well visible uh, cunet uh, shows. Um, this, if it was, if it were um, uh, really Timoleon, it would be um, uh, uh, something really new, unique. Um, but in general, uh, um, this is the, again in the spirit of the self uh, affirmation of the military arete linked to the idea of the possession of the land. Each time it is challenged uh, due to external uh, attacks. Um, uh, an iconographic scheme different from Promacoy is depicted on uh, uh, Geloan uh, denomination after the Timoleontian reform of bronze coinage in Sicily. Uh, we find a unique case, the founder of the polis, uh, while he is just sacrificing a ram, um, a reference to the rituals in honor of local heroes, or maybe the scene of the foundation itself. Um, the pteroi on his helmet are a clear signs of his major role within the army. So another oikist or founder hero. Uh, mm, he should be interpreted as the oikist of Gela and Antiphemos, maybe overlapped by the image of the founder of the new Gela, Gorgos, heroized after his death, um, due to his military value after the Crimisus battle, when he collected all the Geloan exiles to return to their ports. An identical iconography, uh, iconography is revived in the third, second century BC, but without uh, uh, with some differences uh, in the helm, um, without Theroi this time, uh, um, by then maybe an obsolete uh, Sima, um, not well um, uh, understandable by the contemporaries. Um, a clue of the supremacy uh, by the Mamertines over the sanctuary of the, uh, on, uh, situated on the Etna slopes dedicated the, to the local uh, god Adranos can be the presence 
of his head accompanied by his name on this mamertine coin, therefore not belonging to the polis of Adranon. Uh, but here we can we, we have no doubts um, because of of the legend. Uh, as far as Agatirnos is concerned, this rare coin depicting a standing soldier in a different posture uh, can be a clue of the uh, supremacy over the territory named Agatirnis by the police, uh, by the city of Tindaris. It, it is the first appearance of a, an eponymous hero with his name in the legend, uh, with his panoplia, and not in heroic nudity. Maybe due to the influence of the Roman presence in Sicily during the Punic Wars. If in the 5th or 4th centuries uh, BC, the local heroes attacking uh, Promacoi are the only kind of iconography of the warriors, afterwards, the static position of the hero or the warrior prevails um, over the dynamic posture of Promacos. Uh, it, however, it, however, persists in some means, either reviving old models of their own coinage, um, like in Messana, Syracuse, Gela, or like uh, Solus, Lopatus, and Gaulus, adopting them exclusively. Um, the reiteration of the new iconographic scheme uh, of the standing warrior during the Roman rule shows how the new model uh, already seen for the local hero Agatirnos and maybe in the wake of the representations of the local heroes was quickly acknowledged. It is difficult to state if it happened to please the new rulers or because it had been imposed. But in this case, um, why, why only in, in some means? Um, or simply um, because it referred to the new reality of the Roman troops settled in numerous garrisons all over the territory recently uh, conquered by Rome. Um, it might seem that these local, very short coinages, except from Panormos, that's another story, uh, were destined to the Roman garrisons on the territory. But the iconographic choice could simply mean that uh, every issuing center was self-representing uh, through the new peculiarity of being a Roman stronghold even if maintaining their name as the ethnic, uh, the ethnics confer. So um, in general, we have seen that in the fifth century BC, in every representation of subjects connected with war, the heroic aspect prevails as an ideological answer to the epic uh, attack, the Athenian attack. While later, especially during the Punic Wars, it seems to point to a reference of a generic uh, um, idea of war expressed by the warrior replicated in numerous minting centers. Uh, what remains the same over time, regardless uh, the changes in clothing and posture, is the message of civic identity and self-representation, a sort of celebration expressed by the choice of the coin types through the insistence of certain aspects, more or less highlighted in relation to the historical moment. Um, in any case, uh, coin iconography reflects above all the identity of the community that produced it and the particular current political situation. While it is not prudent to assert a dependence of iconographic choices on the destination of the coinage, uh, one certainly cannot help but note 
uh, that uh, the military world strongly permeates the imagery expressed by mm, point depictions because the community that, uh, that uh, expressed uh, that imagery were often communities that had incorporated the military into their citizenship. The new political order of these centers uh, by then permanent seats of Roman troops may have been decisive in the new iconographic choices as self-representation of the new civic body now made up of Roman uh, who shortly afterwards uh, with the massive uh, issue to pay the troops of the denarius the silver coin introduced uh, in into Roman coinage precisely uh, in Sicily in the last years of the Second Punic War, to, together with the so-called martial gold, um, and together with the abundant Roman bronze productions of the series with the Prow, gradually replaced all, all forms of local coinages. And thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Angela. This is very interesting, and this is a very, very complicated and intricate topic in which you know there have been a lot of changes actually in the last few decades. Even thanks to to you, actually, to your work. Um, do we have any questions for uh, uh, Maria Angela now? Because I don't see. I only see uh mike in the chat to discussing the um the heroes if not i of course have one question to begin with so thank you um i found i found the um, really the transition between uh, all these hyper local uh, uh to the iconography, the general iconography in Sicily, spread all over Sicily, even between West and East, really, really fascinating. And, uh, um, but I also wanted to ask you, so when, uh, because of course the Roman Republican time is, you know, of course, you, is long clearly, and it's after the Second Punic War, but when do you really see this sort of uh, common, let's say, when does this sort of common monetary iconography, for example, of the warriors uh, emerge? So as soon as the Romans take control? Um, the I think it has been gradual. Uh, not uh, precisely at the same time in every mint, um, but it's like a mutual influence uh, between uh, among the the mints, uh, and uh, and I don't I don't actually think that it was uh, superimposed. No, but it was just a natural. Uh, self-consciousness of being uh, something different. Now they are not no more the, um, the Sicilians, uh, proud of being uh, something different than the, the Greeks, than the Athenians, uh, but uh, being uh, uh, a new, um, a new corp of citizens. Uh, that uh, involves also th these new presences be because the uh, the garrisons were uh, widespread all over the territory of the island, uh, so um, they are reorganized. They were reorganizing uh, uh, ad from the uh, administrative point of view. Uh, the 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 civic uh, um, realities. So, mm -hmm. um, but any, uh, because Rome usually do not uh, 
uh, it's not too much intrusive uh, in what exists and in what functions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I told, I told you. So just to actually reinforce your point, because I think it's absolutely fascinating. And by the way, we have your compliments for Mike uh, Markowitz and Mary Lennon for your fantastic presentation. Actually, wonderful presentation here. I quote verbatim. Um, for example, the so-called uh, questorial coinages, another one probably issued in Lilibeo in the West, in Western Sicily. And in theory, they are if, exactly, that's what I, okay, perhaps it's too, it's too detailed, but that's what I want to, because I mean, they have, for example, a warrior and they are right uh, probably in 190 and stuff. So like it really begins immediately after the Romans take control. <laughs> Hmm. But in the, in the western part of Sicily, uh, the, the Roman presence was stronger. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, we, we should make a distinction between uh, western and eastern Sicily uh, yes. after the, the, the arrival of the Romans, not only for a chronological <laughs> point of view, of course, uh, but also because uh, the situations were different, um, mm, much more a unity in the Western part and uh, uh, still fragmented in the Eastern part, even if mm, there, there had been Syracuse uh, uh, in, in a sort of way, um, um uniting uh, uh the, the the eastern part uh during the the punic wars uh anyway mm, this mm, i think that the cities had maintained a uh, uh, kind uh, of uh, autonomy autonomy yes of course mm. okay no thank you thank you so much because of course it's super uh integrated and then uh, but the another time uh, another time not now of course uh, i would like to discuss with you the night uh, for example on the coinage of course of sicily like but this is another time uh, this is another this was absolutely fantastic because yeah, yeah, yeah i would this I'm is what i'm asking you exactly i'm asking you in uh, like seven minutes <laughs> <laughs> so you. Are there any other questions for uh, Professor Pugliesi, for Mariangela? No? Oh, yes. Please. Unmute yourself. The, uh, the first coins uh, to, as far as we know, have images supposedly of actual people uh, in any degree of of uh, frequency would be the uh, Persian satraps. And by the time we get to Alexander the Great, you actually have personal characteristics. When we find the name of, of, of someone on some of these coins, do you think there's any chance that there's are personal characteristics uh, there, or is it still in the period of simply an idealistic image? Yeah. Um, you refer to the Syracusan uh, coin with Archias or Timoleon. Um, it, it's a, an hypothesis of some scholars, uh, but uh, um, it, it, it is based on the fact that the personage was uh, a hero. Uh, so then uh, it, it, uh, it had, uh, he had a superhuman uh, um, uh, he, he was superhuman, so <laughs> that uh, uh, it could have been possible. Uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, I I think uh, mm, it it should be Archias, not uh, Timoleon. But it's uh, fascinating. It's uh, suggestive. This uh, hypothesis uh, of uh, having. Uh, a uh, historical personage uh, 
even although already dead, of course, uh, on a coin uh, uh, so early. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Do we have other questions for Mariangela? No? Okay. Then I have a question, uh, oh, please. brief question about what fraction of these coins do we know to have been overstruck? Uh, what uh, what coin uh, what coins are you referring to? There was one slide which just mentioned an overstrike, and I'm not sure if that was um, uh, an exception I or much maybe more. Maybe Antella. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 there are some, uh, there are a lot of, uh, of struck coins uh, in Antella because they were mercenaries. So they uh, used uh, the flans, they, the flans, <laughs> as flans, the coins they had. And they are uh, mm, mm, a mixture of coins. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they are very common. Uh, they are common uh, not only in, in, in bronze, they are common also in uh, uh, silver fractions, uh, also in, uh, in metal, we have some, uh, and uh, it depends on the, um, on the coins they, they had in, in their pockets uh, after the campaigns uh, they uh, paid their service in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.